Okay, today I'd like to talk about one of the things you'll be doing as a new yachtsman quite often, and that is um, kind of going on a mini tour of an area. So I find that most of my customers, you know, there are, there are seasons when they kind of sit on the boat, they're not moving a lot, and they're happy being in the town they're in, and then they want to go somewhere. So what I see a lot is we will plan a trip around certain events. For example, there might be a football game in Tampa. And if there's a great football game in Tampa and you know it's going to happen two months from now and you can find a way to get tickets, maybe you plan a trip around that date. And I would advise you again, it's a boat, not a plane or a car. Um, we need to get there probably two days ahead of time to be safe. And we need to plan to be there a day after because everyone will be leaving at the same time. So when we want to see a football game in Tampa, let's plan on maybe three nights at the marina would be a, a good, good goal. Um, these larger cities like Tampa, you know, they have rock concerts and they have all kinds of sports teams and things like that. And it's a really fun way to use your yacht. You'll find that most of the coastal cities in the United States have a marina fairly close by. Um, and especially with Uber and stuff, it's really not hard to plan your yachting trip around these events. Um, one of the key things to focus on, I think, is getting a hold of that marina manager and understanding what the facilities are and what's available in the area. Um, and something I do with my family before I move the boat is I try to drive there by car. So if you are 60 miles away or 100 miles away and you can find time to hop in your car, your rental car, and go to the area and go meet the marina manager, whoever that marina manager is, they know everything about the area. They know where you can find football tickets when that's all sold out. They know the great restaurants in town. Um, they know what your family would like to go do because they help other people do it all the time. So what I do is I usually go by myself or sometimes I'll bring my daughter to get her excited uh, and show her the swimming pool or the hot tub or something else because it's nice to kind of pre-sell the destination to the family if they're not into the sports team you're into. So when you're looking at doing some of these hopping around these different cities. I think it really helps if you really organize it well, plan several days in one spot. If you just arrive at 10 a.m., go to the event, leave the next day, you're spending a lot of your time washing the boat and just getting organized. Everyone on the boat will have a lot more fun if you plan more than one activity and you have, you're kind of the cruise director. You've really got to have a plan so that everyone has a good, good time while you're in that area. Um, the coastal United States is just fantastic for this. And if you can plan it so that you can only do 50 or 60 miles a day, I would say that's best. When you're trying to go 100 miles a day and people are at sea all day, um, it's not always nice weather and it doesn't give them time to get settled when you get to the other end. So my goal is always something around 50 miles a day I like to leave early in the morning and I like to arrive, say lunchtime or soon after, so that by dinner time, everyone's showered, the boat's clean, everyone's organized, and it's still daylight when you're docking. Don't be overly ambitious. Um, it's very easy for the new yachtsman to think that we're going to cross oceans and we're going to see everything in a week. And um, not everyone on the boat is excited about the actual boating as you are typically. So try to keep everyone else's desires in mind. Try to really find other things for everyone to do. The, um, the websites for the individual marinas and stuff are not always great. A lot of these facilities are relatively small and it's not necessarily a resort unto its own. In other words, the golf course and the country club that's nearby that you may visit is not part of the marina. So when you're just researching online the marina, um, it doesn't give you a good feel for the area. And that's another reason I would say it's really important to preview the, the site. Go there by car, eat dinner at a local place, try to go in and meet the dock master. Um, and the dock master will have a bunch of guys working for him typically. And they're usually young people that quite honestly, they don't eat in the really nice restaurants and they don't know the area that well. They're, they're 20 something and they're, they're good at helping you tie up the boat. You've got to go into the marina office You've got to ask for the facility manager um, and try to you know, get to know that person. I would encourage you to get their email address and get their phone number. And you're probably doing this a couple months ahead of time 
so that before you leave the place you're in now for this new destination, you can check in with them again and reorient yourself and make sure they remember you're coming. Um, when you get to the marina, um, and I'll go through this some um, outside as well. When you get to the marina, you're going to typically call them on the radio. At the marina, each marina will tell you to switch to a special channel and maybe it's channel 71. Now you'll be talking fairly privately with that marina and your boat. They'll tell you how to come into the marina and they will typically have someone meeting the boat at the dock. And this will be very handy. So if you're running the boat and your wife down helping with lines, um, there will also be someone on the dock. And if you really feel you should have this, it, it's um, customary for you to go ahead and ask, can I have a dock hand at the marina? And that dock hand at the slip will take the line from your wife and she will help guide, she, he will help guide you into the slip and help you tie up and help you hook up shore power. Um, this person will also know about washing company and you can ask them that on the radio as well. So it's not hard to have the boat washers meet you at the boat if you plan it ahead of time or show up in the next day or two um, to really give the boat a good wash while you're there. <clears throat> Once you're tied up and plugged in, it would be customary to tip this person. So this person that helped you tied up, maybe he's been there for 15 minutes, helping you tie up organized lines and fenders, plugging in the boat, making sure you have shore power, um, how much do you tip these guys? I give them 10 bucks. I might give them 20 bucks. If I'm going to stay for a week and I know this guy's going to be around a lot, I tip them heavy in the beginning. Pay, they'll pay attention to me the whole time I'm there. So I, I tip, tip them 20 bucks in the beginning and uh, get to know his name. And, um, you know, that'll be a great resource for me the whole time I'm staying. If I'm just staying for the night, it might, well, it might only be 10 bucks. Um, so now you're tied up in the slip and you've plugged in the boat and you shut down your generator and you've got everything organized. And um, typically these marinas will have a security system of some type. So there'll be some tort type of gate and that gate will have a gate code and they will issue you a gate code. And there will often be a code for the bathroom facility. Most of these marinas will have a really nice bathroom facility and laundry facility. So instead of using the shower on the boat all the time, you've got unlimited hot water, and maybe seven washing machines and seven dryers up in this building. So a lot of these nicer facilities, you'll actually find that in the morning, you're gonna get up and actually go to the bathhouse, if you will, um, if you just wanna go use that instead of having everyone be on the boat. So it's very convenient. That's also very private. That's why there's security. Um, so you may find yourself in this very clean facility and um, there's really nice clean shower stalls and everything. And a lot of them are really nice. <clears throat> now, again, you, you can, all, of course, do all that on the boat as well. Uh, once you're in the marina, um, you will go to the marina office. And at the marina office, you'll fill out a piece of paper that confirms everything that you made when you made your reservation about the boat length and the power and all of that kind of stuff. And um, you'll give them your credit card so that they have billing and you'll tell them when you're leaving. Uh, you don't usually have to check out like a hotel. So if you're supposed to leave on Tuesday, you can leave on Tuesday. Um, they will have a checkout by time and they will expect you to actually leave. And if you're not going to actually leave, you need to let them know and make sure it's okay because that same slip may have another boat coming in at two o'clock. So if you told them you're gonna be out at 11 and you're getting a late start, you need to call them so that you don't have another boat just showing up. Um, the marina facilities, I would say the electricity is probably the biggest issue. So as you get into some of these older places and older docks, especially here in Florida, where they're exposed to hurricanes and things, um, probably your number one issue is shore power. So it is not uncommon for the voltage to be irregular or low or the shore power to go out at times, just because the actual plugs and connections under the docks have been exposed to salt water over the years. And that's when you'll call that guy that helped helped you tie up, you'll call the office. Sometimes they have to come and reset a breaker. Sometimes they have to move your power, power cord to a different plug. Um, but that's probably your number one issue with the dock. All marinas now are required to have a pump out facility. So the um, holding tank on your boat, maybe it's 100 gallons, probably lasts you and your wife uh, a good week. 
if there's more people on the boat, of course, it's a shorter amount of time. So most docks here in Florida actually have the ability to pump out at the slip. So you can call the, the front desk and you can say, I need a pump out. And they will often tell you, well, we do your dock every Wednesday. And if that works out, that's fine. Um, if it doesn't and you really need a pump out, they will come to your dock as well. They may charge you a little bit of money for that, but it's not expensive. And what happens there is it's basically a large suction device that pumps the, the waste from the deck fitting in your boat. And it goes, there's a hose that goes down into the tank. And then this big pump pumps it into the normal sewer facility for the town. So it ends up in the same place as if you'd had a house. And um, it doesn't take very long. It takes 10 or 15 minutes. Um, most of the docks have water. So you will fill your water tank from the dock when you need to. And I prefer to do this rather than hooking a hose to the boat. Almost every boat has the ability to hook a hose to the boat. The problem with hooking the hose to the boat is if something springs a leak, there is unlimited water from the county municipality that will flood your boat. If you spring a leak from the tank, once the tank's empty, the leak is over. So I prefer that you fill your water tank every three or four days or whatever it takes to to have enough water on board so that you're never at risk of putting high pressure water into the boat when you're not there or even at two o'clock in the morning when you are there. Um, it can be a big mess and I've seen it happen several times. So my recommendation is you fill the tank as needed. Air conditioning, you'll of course you'll be running your air conditioning at the dock like normal. That is the biggest draw of electricity here. Uh, so your yacht probably draws more for air conditioning and heat than it does for anything else. So if you lose dock power, you lose air conditioning. Um, in a lot of marinas, it's okay to run the generator. It's considered bad form if your generator is um, loud, but typically in this class of yachts you're looking at, they're fairly quiet. And as long as you don't have a liveaboard right next to you, that's very sensitive to it. If the dock power went out at two o'clock in the morning, you can just fire up the generator, operate as normal until they can come fix it the next day. I hope all this helps. I start to envision the, uh, the life aboard the motor yacht. And thank you very much. And please uh, like and subscribe.